So the so the Gronk brothers back home in Buffalo. Could you guys like? And I don't want to incriminate any um, grocery stores or or gas stations or anything. But could you guys go buy beer because you were the Gronk brothers? Nah, hell no, man. No? <laughs> nah, we were. I mean, we weren't cool until like, yo Rob won a couple Super Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't get away with that back then. Bunch of bandwagon <laughs> fans. <laughs> And welcome to the Darren Woodson show. So on this, Ben always talks about how much he does, right? Yeah. And and he's I the driver. Said anything in ever? Oh bullshit! Man. <laughs> come on, man. you get me, get me to cussing <laughs> already. About what I come on, we have show just barely started. And I'm cussing. But thirty seconds in, I've already lied. <laughs> so today, I'm proud to introduce our guest because yours truly. Finally came up. Had the relationship and finally Dude, came through. Put your phone on silent, man. 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 Some of us got to work. Some right. of us got to right. work. So here we go. Here's a good intro. Show here's, some respect. here's a great That's intro. It. And we're going to give you this clip to share with, on your TikTok. Okay. What there happens? Go. There we go. What happens, Chris Gronkowski, in the... In the meeting room, if your phone goes off. Oh, man, that's that's a huge fine. And if you were me, you're probably being cut as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's for sure. <laughs> man. No uh, questions asked. No, you're out. Oh, yeah. You're done. You're so done, that's man. day one, fine schedule, five grand. Your phone yeah, rings yeah. in the meeting, five grand. That's, yeah. that's a big one. But man. that's a good point because yeah. I would have been cut too. <laughs> I don't know what that Scared like. to death. Hey, <laughs> I left my phone in my car so that say? never would happen. So I don't know what that feels like, man. I'm hey. just being. Hey. Darren, I'm Darren's, Darren's in the meeting room. Hey, how was that, baby? <laughs> what, you, yeah. what you doing? Hey, hold oh, on, nah, coach. I, hey, hold on, coach. I got to get this. Let me get this real quick. <laughs> Yo, how, right. good, how good were the excuses, though? Like, did you have a guy that his phone would go off oh, and yeah. he'd make up? Like, we had this one rookie. Um, and he was like, oh, this is my sister's phone. Like, she had this, the, you know, this alarm set on. In like, public? Was he, like, was in front like, of everybody? This was in front of the team. Like, team. I, yo, it wasn't my fault. Like, he had the most elaborate excuse I've ever uh, heard. I'm like, man, how'd you even think of that word? Like, that was insane. So let's, though, let's clarify, though. The phone ringing in the meeting was not an issue for Darren because pagers weren't even invented that's when true. he played oh, that's true. in the league. Oh, that's so let's shot. be very clear. He that's never that's had to actually deal with it. Yeah. That's a good point. But mm -hmm. here's, a, here's the last thing on this, and we'll, and we'll introduce Chris some more and, and, uh, and get on to your story. But what was the first reaction by the entire team if you hear the phone, somebody's phone ring? What do they do? Everybody starts going, oh. Is that or? Hey. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys look out for each other in there. Yeah, really? start coughing. Oh, man, I'm pointing you out. That. I'm pointing you out. That's him. <laughs> yeah. That's like dumb and dumb. I don't remember right. that part. Yeah, but sometimes the cough was just like to even make it more obvious. Made it worse. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Off. Like, that's it was almost right. like you're calling them out at the same time. That's right. That's, that's right. All right, anyways, we'll get to it. Enough tangents. Uh, so we've got Chris Gronkowski here. He's, he's a former Dallas Cowboy, former Bronco. Uh, a plethora of other teams, and we'll get through that that journey. But uh, is is a local here, and and some of you may know him from TikTok, mm. from Shark Tank. Uh, I'm no, I'm, I'm no I'm all you, you all, you, all our show. teeny bopper fans that you <laughs> yeah. for sure know him on TikTok. TikTok yeah. But man, we're really excited about this because uh, the story that he's got is incredible. Um, yes, he played at the highest level at the best sport in our country. But what he's done since then and what he's built off of that platform is nothing short of amazing. So really excited, man. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it, man. I like the intro too, man. The, the 44 before the 44. Oh, right? yeah. 44 oh, right. yeah. What the hell is the hey, reason for 44? Hey, for real, I is asked it? for 44 and they said, hey, we retired it, man. It, that thing's up in the rafters <laughs> yeah. at at Wait, So you were, you were before? Yeah, he okay. was in Dallas before yeah, me. Like, gotcha. There was like a year between us where yeah. they, didn't, they didn't have a fullback for like But why year. at 44? What, what was the reasoning for 44? They for just you? gave it to me. I had no then, reason. Yeah, like my whole career. Tom Rathman. Go back to Rathman. Tom Rathman. Chris, did you even know who Rathman was? Nah. Thank you. Don't, to Thank you. Oh, no, no. I don't even know who's You're talking. Out. My heart hurts. Bro. Hey, you didn't mention the intro. He's our first in-person guest too in the new studio. Oh, for real. Nice. Yeah, in the yeah. new studio, that is yeah. true. Yeah, you are Again, our first. Yeah. Sorry, man. I was hey, just excited to have him. Man, you brought him. Hey, it's not about I, us. It's not about us, man. It's about hey, Chris today. That's right. 
I'm just bringing the, bringing All right, the knowledge. So, so Chris, on, on the show, we really like to start with the journey because we want to paint the picture of our guests, kind of how they were raised, um, how they were brought up, you know, maybe some challenges throughout life, you know, whether you got recruited or not, what it was in high school, did you mature late, early, just some of the things that you went through and then transitioning to the NFL because being a fullback in the NFL, is, it's not an easy journey. want to hear some of that. But again, as you go through it, it's that after that is it's intriguing to me and how right. guys transition, right. uh, whether they transition gracefully, whether it's hard, it may look really good. Like, Hey, he's a multiple business owner. He's done all these things, but like they don't see all the challenges and, the, right. and the obstacles that you've overcome. But take us back to the beginning, uh, running around with all the little Gronks. Man, when I, when I hear back man. in the day. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> it's crazy because I got three boys now. And I'm like, man. Five, oh, five, man. Five, man. Five. What's five like? <laughs> <laughs> my wife wants to keep going, too. She's trying to <laughs> time for a girl. I'm Come like, on. I realize uh, what you can up. control some of that now. Yeah, yeah you can. <laughs> you can control some. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to control Hey, bless her now. for wanting a fourth a fourth yeah, child after yes, her boys, yes, so yes. We'll, we'll see, man. But the odds are probably going to be a boy. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. you know, I feel like I'm going to end up like my dad, but <laughs> see what happens. Probably have to go for number five. But man, growing up, uh, it, this is how our house was like. We had we had no furniture. Like we had a couch and a rocking chair. We had no pictures on the wall because everything became a weapon. <laughs> so like it, it was just all out brawls every day. So my mom would just be like, hey get outside, go play. And, and that's really where all the competition came from. Like we didn't sit there and watch TV. It just wasn't even possible for yeah. us. So uh, we were outside and we were that neighborhood where like somehow everyone in the neighborhood had kids our age. So uh, tons of boys in the neighborhood and they'd all come to our house. So it wouldn't just be us five, it'd be us five plus you know, two or three of our friends as well. And, you know, we just play games all day and that's where the competition came from. And you always had to try to beat the older brother and then mm -hmm. if you couldn't, you had to at least beat his friends that weren't as athletic, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. So it was oh, just yeah. always, always brawls and competitions going down. And, you know, uh, that's where it came from. I was the middle. So I was the middle, and I was the shortest, and I was, like, the little fat kid that they would make fun of. So, uh, you know, my nipples went in, and that was, like, the, like, <laughs> that was like all they would talk about, man, for years. Like, that's it was a like, great description. I bet you guys are the biggest <laughs> shit talkers. I mean, who's the best trash talker when you guys are growing man. up? Who was the one that instigated yeah, everything? Rob was by far the number one instigator. Like, and he knew how to take it to the point where like, it would just get under your skin, right? right. Just like drive people insane, especially like his teachers and my mom and, and stuff like that. But he knew how to take it to like right to the point where he wouldn't get in trouble either. Right. And then he'd be like, yeah, then he'd stop. Mm -hmm. But he was just, he was out of control. But he also just loved the beatings too. Like he was the only brother that would, you know, I was older than him and I'd just destroy him right back then. Yeah. Like. I was like, being fat when you're young is actually awesome. It's, it's an advantage. Yeah, it's yeah. huge, man. Like, yo, I won every fight. Right. It, no doubt, man. Like, I had the leverage. Like, I destroyed him every time. But he would then go after my older brother, Dan, who was two years older than me. And Dan was like this monster, man. Like, mm. Dan was 6'6", 245 in high school. Jeez. Rob would go after him and just, like, he'd just punish him, man. And he'd just keep coming back for more. So, mm. that was, that was yeah, he was by far <laughs> biggest instigator. And he'd just get beat down and just keep coming back and – I think that's where his toughness came from. Yeah, but right. Dang. Good brawls, man. So good how was mom and, and dad through through this process, man? Were they encouraging you guys to, uh, to, to be athletes, or were they more so, you know, they just wanted to drive you guys in, in any certain particular way? Yeah, so it was a, it was a pretty good combination. Um, so it wasn't like we were this football family either. People were like, man, your dad probably just, like, had you guys in pads at, you know, age 10. And it wasn't like that at all. We didn't actually play football till high school. Uh, we grew up playing baseball, and hockey was big. Mm. We're from Buffalo, so yeah. played a lot of hockey. They, oh, that's where we learned to hit, too, uh, was <laughs> in hockey. And yeah, that's fun, man. It's fun on skates. But, um, you know, my dad was, you know, he was working two jobs. He started his own business, so he started that up six years working two jobs. Uh, my mom was working as well when she could until I was born, so uh, then she was a full-time mom. But, um, you know, she would make sure that all of our homework got done. Uh, you know, everything was taken care of. She made our lunch. She made our breakfast, you know, made dinner, everything. We never went out to eat. And she'd take care of us from that side. And then my dad would coach all of our teams and just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, make sure that, you know, if we wanted to be good players, he would help us be good players. But if we didn't want to, that was fine, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what's cool about that is how involved they were. They yeah, just absolutely. invested, man. I mean, they just – just being there. My mom That's was huge. like – like, she had, like – it was more than a full-time job just being a mom. Right. Like, everything she did, like, I, I, I think about this. I'm like, you didn't even have a cell phone, but you had to drive all of us to practice, to school. And we all played multiple sports, and we're on mm -hmm. multiple teams. Mm -hmm. And it was so insane. Like, she couldn't even physically drive us 
to every single practice that we had. So she had to find ways to like, you know, have our neighbor. That's right. Coordinate everything. Some, yeah, yes. And yeah. do all this. And then like, you know, stuff would happen and there wasn't even a cell phone to be like, Hey, sorry, I'll be a little bit late. Or like, Hey, someone else is going to pick you up. Like you got to figure out a way to get that done somehow. Right. And she had like this massive calendar where, uh, Yo, the squares are like this big on it and they're all filled in with like all the stuff we had. <laughs> real small farm. Like, it was insane. So I look back at that. I'm like, yo, she was basically running a full-time business of just taking care of five yeah. boys. Mm. Do, you, do you think that's where, because you're, you've got an insane work ethic now. I mean, was it just something you saw growing up? Obviously, was it things that they taught you and told you? How did you learn that, that yeah, work ethic? I, I mean, up? everything we had, we had to earn. So we had a paper out early on. Um, you know, we were umpiring at the local baseball fields. Mm. My dad had his business. So age 15, I'm, I'm, I'm doing uh, deliveries for fitness equipment, you know, and I'm carrying the heavy end on these treadmills too. Cause I, <laughs> you know, I was the strongest one there, right? <laughs> not so I got the belt like, side, not the one that turns. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, with the, motor. the motor is heavy, man. So I'm 15, like I'm working with like 30, 40 year old men and they're mm. having me carry the heavy end at age 15. And, uh, you know, as soon as I have my license, I'm driving the trucks and stuff like that too. But uh, yo, it was like, Hey, if, if you want a car, cool, go buy one. Uh, if you want to go to college, awesome. Get a scholarship or, or yo, get a loan. Mm -hmm. and that's how it was. So we were never handed anything. And I think at first it was because my parents had nothing, mm -hmm. but after a while, my, you know, my dad was doing well, you know, even, even lately, man, he'll still take like the free points on the airlines to get somewhere and, and to get like two layovers right. just to take the free flight. I'm like, come on, dad. Like, <laughs> you can't afford it now. Like you're 30 years in yeah. your business. You're, you're the second largest distributor in the U S of right. this equipment. Like, come so, on, man, <laughs> buy that flight. So growing up, what did your dad do? You said he worked two jobs. What exactly yeah, so was he doing he, those two jobs? At first he was, um, he was selling, uh, like lubricants, superior lubricants was the name of the company. So it was like oil, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that, like in the, in the race car industry and car industry. And then, uh, he started his own fitness equipment company and, that came about because he played football at Syracuse and you know, he had mm. the nice equipment. Mm -hmm. right. And so he came back to Buffalo and, and we started getting older and he wanted to train still as well. And, right. you know, he went to buy some nice stuff and it was kind of like, you know, Sears hardware or whatever, like, mm -hmm. like Dick's sporting goods, like had the low, low end stuff. So he went to buy like the Olympic grade stuff that would last a lifetime and you know, last through five boys and he had to drive to New Jersey to get some. Wow. So at that point he saw an opportunity um, and started his first store. It was just like, you know, this tiny little store and, and eventually he grew it into, uh, I think he has, he keeps buying more up. So I think he's around 17 actual retail locations and in, in a commercial division as well now throughout the Northeast. Mm. Dang. Awesome. That's insane. Okay. So, so dad's working all the time, but he still has time to coach. I mean, how does, yeah, I don't know how he did it, man. Um, yeah, he coached all our teams too. Yeah. Mm. So he would, he would leave early and, uh, he come coach us as well. But I, I don't, I mean, I'm running my own business now and five kids and all that. And, and two jobs. It was pretty impressive what he was yeah. doing. That's incredible. Okay, so so you get into high school. When was it when you're like, okay, hey, I've got the opportunity or the talent to to make it to the next level or or to play at the next level? Obviously, you're talking yeah. about Dan, right? And and so he was a monster, and and you watched his process. But when was it when it clicked in your head that okay, hey, I can do this? Oh, man, uh, pretty much never. <laughs> 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 oh man, so I was I was actually going to the University of Penn. Um, I committed there. I had one D D1 offer at the time, and it was the University of Buffalo. And to me, going to the school down the street uh, yeah. in Buffalo that had no indoor facility mm -hmm. was like, man, they just switched to D1. They're getting crushed every week. And I'm like, I got to leave town at least. Like, I got to go right. somewhere, right? My brother, Gordy, you know, went to Florida. Dan was in uh, Maryland. And I'm like, you know, I just have to leave home. You know, you see people that stay home, and, like, right. they never turn into anything. I'm like, I just need that experience away. So uh, I was going to Penn, and, and – at that time, there was no scholarship offers like academic help or anything in Ivy League. I think they changed that rule now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You just tried he just to breeze said, over yeah, that. He just you said Ivy said, League. Like, <laughs> like, is, is that <laughs> French? How, what, what is that? How, were you kind of student? Were you in high school? Yeah, so I, I mean, I was taking officials to um, – oh, I, I, I got to give myself – the number one party at Harvard on my official visit. Like, <laughs> you know, I went all out on this visit, man. Like people, I guarantee still remember that visit. Was hey, party he so was breaking there. tables back then. <laughs> I was going to say the, the <laughs> Bill's Mafia. Hey, I'll, I'll tell you what though, at Harvard, like you can do whatever you want on campus. Like they don't really, like you can get away with anything because they don't expect you to party there. So like, yeah. you know, we went, I went hard and they were just like, <laughs> yeah, the cops like never get called here because you know, they, yeah. such a smart not, kids. It's yeah. just, yeah, it's like, yeah. So it was like, you can do anything here, man. It's pretty cool. But, um, yeah, what got, got to Penn and then, um, I got into the Wharton business school, which was like, 
Wow. You know, most of the time you got to take like two yeah. years and take yeah. classes and all that. And um, they let me in and, and I got that. I got that because of football. Like mm. I normally wouldn't have got in, but they wanted me to go there. So they let me into the business school. And I think like Trump's daughter was in it at the time. And they're like talking about all that. And, um, you know, it sounded like a good idea, but I would have been leaving school with like 200 K in debt. Mm. So um, last minute, it's like the end of summer and I'm about to go to Penn. I'm like, man, this is, you know, it's cool, but it's going to suck at the same yeah, time. Right. Like it's a lot of money too. And um, I get a call from Maryland and my brother Dan was there and he was doing really well. And um, they're like, Hey, you know, uh, we're almost about to go into academic probation. Uh, we lost a couple running backs that were coming in. Would you want a last minute scholarship, like full scholarly? And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> I I want scholarly, one. Man. <laughs> Absolutely. So it was like two weeks left in summer. Uh, like camp was starting in two weeks and they gave me this offer and I was all in. I'm like, let's, let's do this for sure. So uh, I took that and, and I joined my brother at Maryland. That's awesome. So what was that like? Because I guess you played in high school together, right? Yeah. So, so I was, yeah. What was it like in college, though? Like he'd been there what two years at that point? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what was that like joining him on a on a, on a football D one football roster? Man, it, it, it was just for me. It was like I can't believe this actually happened. Yeah. Like, that's that's insane. So, um, you know, I, I always saw like he was you know he was always like this insane athlete, like massive, like you know, mm-hmm. it was kind of expected for him, but. I was like the short, slow one that like, you know, there was no chance for. Right. So that was huge for me. I was super pumped to be there. Like I went all in. Mm -hmm. They kind of said like, if you come here, you better have a 4.0. So I had to, you know, make sure my grades were really good. Um, My freshman year, I was like the, they do like the iron turf award. So I was the strongest pound for pound player in the running back room. So I just went all in, man. And uh, just tried to be the best that I could be when I was there. So what do you think drove you? So you get there and yeah, you have these standards, but like, it takes a next level of like desire to be great, right? To because you get to college and especially your first year, right? Like eyes are big, you're taking in a lot. Like life is different in college than it is high school. But like, what was it that you're like, nah? Like I'm gonna be the strongest. I'm gonna be the best student. I'm gonna be. I mean, because that's not easy. Like I, t- right. I tell people, like I, I just remember in college driving to class. And knowing, okay, hey, I just already had my 6 a.m. workout. I already watched film. Now I'm walk- going to class for four hours, and I'm going back to practice, and then I go watch film, and then I go home. I mean, life is not easy for a collegiate athlete. No. But, like, to excel like that, what was it? Man, I always say that, too. Like, I, I look back, and I'm like, how did I do that? Like, that's mm-hmm. one of those things you do that you never go back and do again, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even possible. Uh, but I think it was just the family thing, man. Like, mm-hmm. I kind of, I've always been like the underdog. It was always underdog mentality for me. Like being, being the smallest and, and the shortest and the slowest or whatever it was, it was kind of, I always had to work the hardest as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, okay. So you, so you're there, you're playing, are you playing tailback there or what are you? Uh, nah, what? man, fullback, man. Are oh, you, uh, wait a minute. So in high school, what were you in high school? So I was, um, yeah, I was a fullback and linebacker or like okay. they'd even put me at like strong safety and stuff like that yeah, as well. So, so now we're talking. Yeah. Now yeah, you're so coming got, around. Got a little bit of that, but once yeah. they put me back there, they just run the ball the whole time. So. <laughs> <laughs> That we are? Oh, uh, that white guy's a safety. Yeah, <laughs> deep post. <laughs> oh, the man. Not not in Buffalo, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So so your 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 career there. Okay. When was it at that point? And you said, hey, I never thought that I could play at the next level. But you you ultimately got that opportunity. But what was that like making the transition? And, and what transitions took place? You know, from your first second year in Maryland to you know, ultimately getting a shot. Yeah, man. I, so I ended up leaving Maryland as well. Right. Uh, that's right. Okay. Sure. I was going to say, I was like, so I it was kind of, kind of crazy, but like, you know, my brother Dan and I are there. Rob's the number one recruit in the nation. And, um, you know, he comes on this official visit during spring ball and like the coach rough region at the time, just like destroys me. Like this kid, he's never going to play with me for me. He can't crack an egg, all this shit because I got hurt. And I was a, I was a backup fullback on goal line. So we couldn't run goal line without two fullbacks. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I pull my quad, like it's killing me. I'm trying to run through it and like, I can't even walk mm. one practice. I missed the whole time I was there and he just destroys me for it. Right. Never going to play with him. I, you know, we'll bring in other guys to replace you. He was just super old school mentality, but you know, that's cool. But then you go and tell my dad and my brother that like, mm. you know, yeah. Rob, Rob walks out of there and goes, I am never playing for this guy. So um, I was like, oh, where you going, man? <laughs> so y'all bring me, bring me with you, man. <laughs> Two for one? Let, let, yeah, so let me go with you. So yeah, we start, I started looking. Um, you know, he had every, pretty much every offer in the nation. So um, I was like, oh, you know, let me know, man. So uh-huh. kind of game planned it out. And um, there's a few schools that would keep me on scholarship. Uh-huh. And one of them was Arizona. And we had this friend uh, through, through the fitness industry that 
did the same thing as my dad, but he was an Arizona alum. He had the tattoo on his arm, like hardcore, right? right. Like, mm -hmm. Arizona's going to be the best team ever. Sonny Dice is coming there. He threw the ball 80 times to the tight end, like just sold us so hard. And uh, he's like, just come out for one pool party. Right? One pool party. <laughs> yeah, that's all so it he gets Rob and I out there. Yo, know, they're giving us the golf cart. Rob's driving over bushes, like, you know, just, just doing it all. And just they're doing like, Rob stuff. Yeah, like the coach is on the back of the, the golf cart, like flying off of it while Rob's like jumping, you know, the bushes in front of the, the whole complex, uh, just like killing right. everything. And they were like, that was so awesome, Rob. Like, you know, just, you know, just, just doing whatever it takes to get him there, right? And so he leaves and he was like, yo, that was the best trip I've ever been on. And um, they did, like, this whole interview after. He went to Clemson. Like, he did a couple of visits, and, like, they asked him. And he was like, well, Clemson had the hottest chicks, but Arizona had the most fun, so I think I'm going to go there. So that's, that's, uh, that what, was, like, his post-interview. What a standard. Right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so uh, he, he commits to going there. And so I actually left um, the semester before and went there. Uh, mm -hmm. Had to sit out a year. So I tried to go back to baseball. I, at, I played baseball in high school. Huh. I was mm -hmm. a pretty good baseball player. My older brother, Gordy, played, and he was doing really well. So – like man, I'll, I'll try. I'll try playing baseball for a year when I sit out. Right, I go out and I'm like, yo, you don't play for two years and then you go to the number one team in the yeah. nation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Arizona yeah. Wildcats. Yeah. Jason, yeah. Jason Donald was there, yeah. I think, at that time, wasn't he? Uh, I think he might have just left. But um, what year did you? What year did you? Was, that was. Let's see. That was. Um, it it would have been 2007 when I got there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so he's yeah. yeah, he'd have just left. Damn, I'm old. God, Buffalo. You are old. I was he was yeah, so he's from my hometown. He's a good buddy of mine. He was uh when was he he ended up getting drafted in the first or second round, right? Man, he, he played in the majors I, for a while, but I they won no the idea. national championship while he was there. Yeah, yeah. And uh but yeah, he was like the quarterback at the other high school. Mm. I was a quarterback at the, yeah. the It's hard hey, to hear about Arizona. It's winning. hard to listen to Arizona. Well, I was going to say, this is memories. our second Wildcat on the yeah. show. Yeah, we haven't know, had man. the Sun Devil yet. You got the, the main Sun Devil on the show. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, man? So, yeah, hey, I, I no, we had but, uh, Chris Powell. Yeah. Oh, that's true. right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I like to hear, I mean, so you go on, you guys go on the recruiting trip and all that. And I know the yeah. sun is out, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. That, that, was, that played a role. But so you're there on campus. You're away from home. Now, this is a total different transition for, yeah. from being in, not from Buffalo, now in Maryland, there in Arizona, and you're by yourself. What was that like for you? Man, I, I mean, I, I think the first time I left home was worse, like a lot worse. Like, I, you get a little bit homesick the first time you leave, but after that, I was good, man. Mm -hmm. you know, I, was, I was used to not being home, and uh, I, yeah, I was having a good time, man. <laughs> yeah. so, that's for sure. So, it was cool. Um, you know, when Rob came out, I, he got a little homesick, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was the first time he left, but... For me, it was, it was cool. So, um, you know, I played that one year of baseball. Uh, pretty much sat the bench the whole time. Um, it was cool, though. You know, they let me on the team at least. So, yeah, yeah. right. I, I yeah. think that was also to get robbed there. But uh, <laughs> I was on the, you know, preseason number one baseball team in the nation. So, um, I crushed it in batting practice, too, man. Like, you know, I just dropped bombs. And right. <laughs> at least they were impressed with my, ba my BP, man. There That's you right. Go. Yeah, yeah. BP was money, man. BP bombs, nothing better. <laughs> BP was money. But they were trying to then have me do both, too. So, um, you know, they kept me on scholarship for football. Mm hmm and then I was also trying to play baseball, and it was like it was insane. Yeah, that's too and then much. Do all that. I was doing the workouts. I was actually switching between baseball and football practice, like throughout Damn. the week. Right. And then they make me do both workouts too, and I'm like, man, <laughs> you're gonna make me do the baseball <laughs> right. workout and then the football one the next day. And um, I, I lost like crazy weight too. Like I couldn't even hold weight because, I mean, like you said before, you're in class. Yeah. Or like you're working out or we're doing double headers yeah. for baseball on the weekend then. Oh, yeah. And it's hot as hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're running stadiums in the summer too yeah. at, at one o'clock in like a hundred degree heat. And uh, I, I was like 200, I lost like 30 pounds. It was crazy. Jeez. So I finally just, after a year, I was like, man, I, you know, I have to choose one or the other. I'm yeah. on scholarship for football. So, uh, you know, I, I took that path and just, just went that way and had to go chug. Like I got put on like the gain weight program where you have to wake up every morning and chug like the ginormous uh, blender the, full of the thick protein. stuff yeah, like, that uh, like 2000 calories. Yeah. Like, yeah. He'll yeah. take like yeah. the, you know, the old the camp, the camp juice. Yeah. Whatever yeah, the like powder the, mix is. No, yeah. like the can though. That was like, there was oh. always stuff sitting at the bottom oh of it. My God. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about? With yeah. the real little opening, you crack it. And it's yeah, got yeah, the real yeah. little opening in it. Yes. The metal yeah. Gatorade can. So <laughs> yeah, the protein shakes. And then he, they put two of those in and then they add powder and then like peanut butter, everything you think of. Right. Right. Fills the blender up, and then I had to sit there and drink that until it was gone. And then I was, then I went to class. Oh so that was like gosh. every morning I had to walk to the complex mm. to drink this shake that was like two thousand to twenty five hundred calories, just to gain all the weight back. And if I didn't, you know, I, 
they put me, which made no sense. I'd then get punished and have to do the Stairmaster. Right. So, uh, yeah. like, that's kind of counterintuitive. So, yeah. So, that was my morning. And I remember yeah. walking to class and it's like, you're about to throw up. And mm, you're just walking. so full. Yeah, of just, just, yeah. Of just like, yeah. yeah. So, what kind of football? I mean, at that point, what were you, a junior there or sophomore? So, yeah. So, once, so my sophomore year, I played baseball. And then my junior year was the first year I, I played football. Right. So, what did you think? What was your expectation of going on a football field? Did you always feel like, like, this is this was your future. This is that you oh, were gonna make no. it to the next level. <laughs> hell no, man! I was partying on Thursdays. Uh, you know, Friday I had my head down on the table and at the it, in football meetings, and I play on Saturday. But dude, I was fullback, so I didn't care. Like if I was kind of hung over still, it just made me play better. I was, I was about like, to say, it takes I, the I'm pain just gonna away. go in there and just smash this dude as hard as I possibly can, and just like keep going and try to drive him to the ground every play. And that was it. That was it, man. So uh, that was my junior year, right? So. Right. The whole expe- expectation, too, was like, we'll keep you on scholarship as long as you play special teams. So I was like, sweet. I could definitely <laughs> do that. Um, so it, it, and then even even my sophomore year, I played I played linebacker, and all I'd do in practice was, like, try to fuck Rob up the whole time. Right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so it, it was, like, one of the first weeks, right? And um, I'm on, I'm on uh, whatever you call it then. Um, the scout team. The scout team. And uh, – I'm playing linebacker, and I know the route that Rob's running. Like, I saw the play get called. So <laughs> he's got he's, the cards. It so, shows yeah. you what they're doing. <laughs> so I know he's about to, like, he's just running an easy out, right? And um, I know he's going to try to stick me inside and then, like, you know, cut it out. So when he goes to stick, I, per- I, I just jack him up, right? I put him on the ground, and uh, the receiver coach runs out there. And he's like, if you ever do that to my starting tight end again, you will never be out here ever again. Like, just went insane on me. Like, what are you thinking? Like, all, all right. this shit. And I'm, I'm laughing. He's like, and you think that's funny? I'll get you off this team right now. And I was like, oh, uh, are you going to tell my brother that? <laughs> and he's like, what does that mean? I was like, I, I don't know, man. You should probably go ask him. You should probably ask permission first. <laughs> yeah. and, and after that, man, it was so funny, man. Oh, that's that's all great. everyone was talking about. The other coach was like, Yo, you, you know, that's his brother, right? Yeah, right. No, I had no idea. <laughs> just, yeah, why receiver? Why are you talking to the tight end like he's yours? What are you talking about? Just had no clue that it was my brother, and uh, just it was it was it was great, man. Uh, so. All right, so so that's junior year, but senior year, what was what was that like? Because obviously you got to now put out tape to to get it out to the scouts to even get a shot. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, junior year, I had a great year. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it was my first time I started. I, I played fullback. They didn't have a fullback in the system, so they pretty much said like, "Hey, if you switch from linebacker, our fullback now who was Earl Mitchell, who ended up getting drafted in the second round." Play with him in Houston. Yeah. So, yeah. so Earl was a fullback, and they're like, "Big boy, this guy's so good." But we're wasting his talent by having him play fullback because we use him like eight snaps a game. Yeah. Would you want to play fullback instead? Yeah. I was like, "Yeah, I'll play, you know, that's sweet. I'll, I'll be the starting fullback." So. Uh, they moved me over there. I started there. The first game, I had like ten to twelve snaps oh, and um, scored a touchdown. And then they were like, "Man, oh, this, is, can... this is pretty sweet." Yeah, like, it's actually a pretty cool spot. It was more of like an H back too. So yeah. I was doing a lot more. I was motioning. Uh, I was playing like you know wing and tight end mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So uh, they realized like there was a lot of potential there. So the next game, I'm playing thirty snaps. Next game, forty snaps. And you know, the next thing I know, like it's like an actual position in the offense. And <laughs> Dang. I'm lining up next to Rob. Like he's it's great because like you know running streaks. He'll cut it across the field and like they'll all run with him, and leave me wide right, open. Right. I'm like, man. So every catch I had was like, I averaged like 40 yards a catch or something like that because I'd be so wide open because right. all all the attention would go to Rob and I'm like, man, this is great. Well, what was that like though? I mean, again, you guys are brothers. Say, it. I know where you're going. Say it. Yeah, but say your it. brothers, he's getting a lot of the attention. He is. I mean, little brother. Is, yeah, little brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah and little, it's your little, little, little brother. brother. <laughs> exactly. Little big brother. Yeah. Little big uh, brother. Man. But he's getting all the attention. How are you feeling? I mean, what's the ego feel like going man, through this? I, don't, I mean, like early on, we we were just like enemies, right? The, all the brothers were. Like, right. dude, if your brother got attention, you were like, why is he getting attention? I'm way better than him, right? Mm-hmm. But as we got older and like you go through things together, you become more fans of, of yourselves and like helping mm-hmm. each other out instead. Mm-hmm. So at that point, that's how it was. Like, I never thought I'd make it past college so it it wasn't like this big thing that he was a superstar he was always superstar so it was cool with me but um what i love doing was like we'd end up motioning next to each other too and then all we try to do was just like put guys on their back Mm. that was our thing and then in film room all it was about was like yo watch this next play (laughs) yeah watch this play like that's that's all we were trying to do out there man so it and it even in high school was like that too like i don't know what it was man but we would just always you know Everything was just about the biggest hit possible. Mm, yeah. Bash brothers. It. That's Damn. all we were trying to do. I can't imagine. 
That's awesome. Think about That's having awesome. another boy so I can get uh, Rocco. <laughs> yeah, you get yeah. Rocco a little. <laughs> yeah, I've got a four year old and one year old. I'm thinking about how to, how do I make them the next how do, Can I hold? Can I, <laughs> hey, can I hold Cooper back and then? Can I get, okay, I'm gonna start him early. <laughs> All right, so so now you moved to H back and you and you have these great great year, right? Um, yeah, so I had so a pretty what good year. What was the next next progression for you? Yeah, so I mean the scouts were coming in and um, my coach was like, "Hey, they're actually watching you too," and I'm like, "Nah, I ain't." Right. <laughs> so um, you know, he told me like the Jets were actually you know they they were pretty interested and um, going into senior year, like I, I got serious my senior year, so like I stopped partying on Thursdays. Uh, Thursdays, <laughs> so yeah, yes. like I, you know, I had to give that up, and um, <laughs> that's that the best up. night in college. Just to just so everybody oh, knows, yeah, Thursdays yeah, are the best. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it was good, but um, <laughs> had to give that up, and um, yeah, like I was like, man, like you know, I, I got to really put some effort in. Unfortunately, that summer I tore my hammy, like tore it really bad, and uh, college is just, man, like they they don't care, like they, right. not like the NFL at least, mm-hmm. and um, and it just seems like they don't have as much knowledge, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, instead of letting it rest and heal, you know, I'm getting stretched by the strength coach every oh, day. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I come to find out later, I mean, it turned into this ma- massive chronic issue because, you know, God, every day I just kept getting stretched and stretched right. and stretched. So uh, my whole senior year, I kind of, I played through this injury. You know, my running back coach is pulling me in like, dude, why aren't you trying? I'm like, you know, I am trying. I can't run full speed. Like, mm. it, I, it, it is killing me. Like, you know, it feels like it's hanging. But, um, you know, didn't even let me rest until the whole thing bled out. Like it finally bled out after I like even tore it even Damn. more, like the oh. third day of camp and uh, gave me a day, day off, a day. Me a day off, man. That was it. So like my, the, all down the back of my leg was black and blue. And they're like, all right, we'll give you a day off. <laughs> so <laughs> oh my God. so you know, when you do that, like it never heals. So you're yeah. playing 80% you're the yeah. rest of the year. So uh, really it didn't even come back until I was training for the combine. It was like maybe a month out from, uh, I didn't go to the combine, but from pro day and, uh, that was when I could finally run again. And people were like, man, you're fast. I'm like, right. Yeah. I'm finally healthy is <laughs> yeah. what it is, man. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? So, uh, super frustrating senior year. Rob was also out that year as well. So, um, he didn't play at all. He was, he was, he was completely out. So, uh, with, with back surgery and, um, you know, it wasn't the best year, but it was good enough to get a look. Mm-hmm. So what would I, as a team, how did you guys do those, those two years? Like, man, first year, uh, the first time I we went to a bowl game in 10 years. So uh-huh. went to the Vegas Bowl, and um, we ended up beating BYU. was ranked, I think, like top 12 or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, had a touchdown in the game, which was cool. Oh, go uh, ahead. When you score in the bowl game, too, like everyone's watching and betting on it. So, like, everyone loves you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it, what I found <laughs> out Vegas, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> what I found yeah, out. Like, it, it's, in college football, like, you know, people don't really care that much. But if it's the only bowl game on and they're betting on it, yeah, you yeah, become yeah, their yeah, hero. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> it was the first time I actually seen people, like, that I didn't know reach out and be like, bro, I love you. Like, <laughs> yo, you won me so much money. I'm like, oh, hell yeah, let's go. So, did y'all, did y'all stay in Vegas the night after the game or did you go back right after the game? I, I can't remember. Um, so, you probably went home then. Yep. Yeah, I think you had to, right? In college, I think yeah. they, that's right. The team you, goes back. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't think you have options. Yeah, like that. the team goes back, man. This isn't Fresno, bro. Yeah, come oh, on, dude. We couldn't afford it. <laughs> <enough. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> those, uh, those Spirit Airlines flights didn't fly out past 6 p.m. <laughs> Only one flight a day with Spirit, man. No offense, Spirit, if, if you're interested in pod- uh, sponsoring a podcast. We're looking we for some pod- sponsorship. Yeah, hey, man. They got uh, some good flights to Vegas. That's yeah. right. Hey, for sure. For sure. So you go through this. Now, are you looking at the combine? Or uh, I mean, what's what's your thought process? Is it the next level for sure? I mean, I knew I'd have a shot, so um, yeah, I was going to take it for right. sure. So I, I didn't know what it would be. I didn't know if it'd be drafted, undrafted, or you know, I, really, my goal going into it was like, oh, I'm going to make practice squad for a year or two. That'd be pretty sweet right. and get some money in my pocket and, and go from there. So um, yeah, I, I wasn't sure. Um, you know, I kind of got lucky with you know Dan had an agent. I signed with that guy. Um, started training they paid for my training which was huge that was really it like if mm. i could get my training paid for like yeah. that was a huge mm. home run for me so yeah. uh took that went to miami trained um you know just it was three months of just doing nothing but training mm. that right. was it like so I took was it, it a dream for you i mean i mean yeah. going back was it ever a dream of yours to play at in the nfl or was it sort of like well this is just the process that i'm gonna no go i through. mean definitely a dream it's just a dream i never thought would happen Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like the one in a million shot. Like every teacher was like, oh, you better get do get good grades because you're never going to make it, right? right. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sitting there like, well, shit. Uh, my brother Dan's a lot better than me. Uh, brother Rob is like, that's that's two out of a million. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what's the chances that I make it, right? So oh, I, I never really thought of it that way. Like I just thought like, 
I'm going to go get the best degree I can. I, I got an accounting degree because I'm like, hey, at least I'll make some good money once mm-hmm. I leave here. And then I got school paid for. So I'm like, hey, that's that's a huge bonus for me. Dang, accounting. That was going to ask what you went to school. So say senior year when maybe I'm hurt, hopes are dwindling. What were, what were you thinking that you wanted to do beyond football? Yeah. Or were you thinking about that then? No, I always thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I had the, the accounting degree. Uh, uh-huh. Also, you have all those extra credits from going from like summer school that you have to be yeah. at. So I think I had 130 credits and, and you need 150 to take the CPA exam. So I was like, well, you know, if, if I'm going to that next stage, I already have all this and I have this good degree. Why not take that? So I can at least, you know, come out and make, you know, maybe 60, 80 grand yeah. um, salary coming mm-hmm. right out of college, which is big money. Good. Yeah. yeah you know, big not, jump not from the 700 bucks a month. In scholarly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Was, my dad was paying me eight bucks an hour. So <laughs> that, was, that was some big money, man. <laughs> okay. So, so you, so you do take the exam, you pass it. No, so I never got to that. So, oh. um, well, because uh, yeah, so you were thinking that that's what you're going to do. That probably would have been the next step. Um, you know, instead, you know, I had this chance to to go train and, and you know get the one shot at the, the NFL. So mm-hmm. I went all in on that and just um, you know did the best I could and got healthy, uh, which helped a lot. And then uh, I was able to at, at pro day just man just I just did a good job. So did um, you go to the combine? I didn't go. No, okay. I didn't get invited to the combine. So you didn't go to the combine. You, you have the pro day. I'm sure all the scouts came out and you, you know. You got you were healthy and all. Okay, so going forward, then, what it was the draft like for you? What was that experience like for you? So draft day, we went to New York City, man. Not for me, but for Rob. So oh, y'all, oh, y'all were in the same, same draft class. class. Yeah, same same, class. same okay. draft class. So he came out early, um, and then I was a, a, a redshirt senior, so two years apart, but ended up being in the same draft class. And my brother Dan was in the draft class before us because. He actually gray shirt, uh, yeah, medical gray medical, shirt, medical right? gray shirt yeah. or whatever. Uh, yeah. Just um, I, I don't. I guess. Oh, the academics where you don't take you take like six units or whatever. So what you do is like you take basically a year off after high school and you mm. go in late. Yeah, um, right. Because Maryland they wanted him, but they offered too many scholarships, and then he ended up getting pushed to the next year for whatever. Huh. However, that works. But some schools do it, some schools don't. But um, he ended up doing Darren, that. For you, that's a prop. That was yeah. my prop year. Prop 48. Actually, it wasn't his prop year. I know it wasn't his prop year, but in correlation to your story. <laughs> hey, let's not go down that path, okay? <laughs> no, I got, I'm, I'm still a little burned. He was probably I'm academically I'm still a little eligible. sensitive, <laughs> and you had to bring it back up. We're not even on my story. <laughs> Chris, let's go back to you, it. Chris. Oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's kind of like going to yeah, like prep school for yeah. a year. It, yeah. It's pretty much what it was. Um, so that's that's what Dan did. So he was in the class before us. But uh, draft day, we're there. We're in New York City. It was the first year that they brought, like, more than just first rounders too. So mm-hmm. uh, Rob ended up going in the second round uh, the next day. So it was cool. Um, you know, we had the big celebration. I'll just say the famous helmet on. The helmet the, on. The yeah, <laughs> Dan, Dan had his helmet on. He was with the Lions at the time, and they're they're sitting there going head to head with each other. And uh, <laughs> that was Rob's first call from uh, Bill Belichick uh, uh-huh. to get the hell off the camera. <laughs> So he got the he got the warning early on, man. Like, Did he really call him? Yeah, they called him. So they called him uh, within like the first hour to tell him to stop. No way. Yeah. So that was his intro to New England. Like, you know, Damn, get, get the hell off the camera, uh, take the helmet off, right. and get off stage. And, and uh, <laughs> so that's he, great. He, yeah. So you think they would have done their homework? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they expected that. They were they they giving a heads up before. Did you, did you hear about his recruiting visit in the golf <laughs> cart? <laughs> They did the homework though, uh, yeah. as well, man. Like they came in, and the first question was like, "So, are you, are you guys in a frat?" I'm like, what do you mean? We, what do you mean? <laughs> Why do you think that? And they're like, "Oh, I don't know. I just heard you guys like to party." <laughs> so we and, and we called our house Club G. Like that was that was our house. There you go. That was like yeah. where all the players came over to, right? So they they just kind of like thought it was this frat house, but uh, it wasn't. It was just yeah. our regular house that we that we lived in. Just the Gronks, man. But yeah, they did the research, man. Uh, uh, they do everything. Like we had a hot tub and. My Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> we done Wait skipped way minute. too much. <laughs> you got a hot tub in college? Yeah, so that's a pretty good story, too. So the, uh, <laughs> back then, like, you could play online poker, right? It right. Was, it yeah. was legal. Oh, yeah. So my older brother, Gordy, was a Wait really a minute. Before you go down this road, you're going to incriminate yourself. No, no, no. Is the nah, school nah. going to go back <laughs> under probation? Nah, you, you could do this, man. This was legal at the time, okay. right? So my older brother, Gordy, was big into it, and he was playing in the minor leagues, too, so he came to live with us, right? To, to mentor us is, is what it was. But really he was, uh, he was back in Club college. G. He was back in college with some money in his pocket right. too, which is, which is like super dangerous, right? Imagine having money, but being right. in college Oh still. my gosh. Uh, so 
he's living with us and, and I'm playing online poker. Like I'll play in class and everything too. And it was a good source of money, man. I play heads up in class and you know, I ended up, I, I would make enough money, a couple thousand a month to, you know, do whatever Damn. I wanted with. <laughs> so, you know, we kind of took all of our money and we bought a hot tub for our house. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we needed it. We're sore after practice, right? right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Therapeutic. <laughs> Write it off. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, when the scouts came in, they were like, yo, let's see the panty tree. And we're like, what do you mean? So, like, like my brother would throw the panties up in the tree. And the man, how in the hell did they get all this information? I, I don't know, man. I think the coaches would tell There's, them. You had some rats, man. I, some think, <laughs> I think it was the coaches. Like, they just love talking well, about Maybe it was so. the videos that you guys were uh, recording. Man, back, <laughs> well, this was before. Yeah, this yeah, was before then, Instagram. Man, yeah. This was when, like, you yeah. had flip phones and, like, the, the cameras were just coming out. So, even if they did, yeah. like, they were such trash that it. you couldn't even tell what was going on. So, right. we're, we're, we're lucky back then, man. Thank like, goodness. Now... <laughs> There's no more. Can you imagine no YouTube tips. or Instagram back when you guys were in Arizona? Yeah, good, I mean, that, that wouldn't have been good. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> You'd be back in Buffalo pretty quick. <laughs> man, yeah, probably. <laughs> that, would, that would have been We just had to shape up, you know. That was, um, it was when Facebook was around, too, though. And I remember when I was at Maryland, they did this whole, uh, like, lecture on, like, how to, like, what pictures not to put up there. And then they yeah. used my picture as what not to put up there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was the first one to go up on the board for, for what not to put on Facebook. So that Wait was, a minute. What that was, was that picture? What was, what was the picture? I had like, man, I was, I had like this massive, like just cup in my hand that was just, I was chugging out of it. It was probably like 20 drinks in it. So that was like the, in, in that time I was a freshman too. So they were like, yeah, you're 18 years old. Yeah. 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 I mean, you couldn't tell what you didn't really know what was in it, though. So. Right. Well, right. yeah. what is this? You know, I know we're gonna keep going on, but where does that come from? Is that your your mom's side of the family, or your dad's man, side? Man, that of the was family? my older brother, Gordy. Man, just he was just a party he animal. Tone, man, huh? he said it for everyone. <laughs> right. Like my parents would leave the house to go to like a Sabres game, and my dad had a suite and have to take out you know uh, customers, and yeah, you know, within ten minutes there'd be a party at our house. <laughs> like he he was like he would like hide beer in the bush, and then like you know, have his neighbor come over, our neighbor come over and tie like his, his bed um, sheets to it and pull it up through the window. <laughs> like that was like one of his main moves. <laughs> just brilliant. To, just to get like a 24 pack up in the room, man. <laughs> that was, yeah, it was, he was pretty impressive. So could and, you like, guys he's still partying today too? Like, is he? He's still single. Uh, and he's still got it, man. Like right. yeah, he could go all week, all week, all weekend. Like wow. he'll, he'll still go hard, man. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Right. So the so the Gronk brothers back home in Buffalo, could you guys like and I don't want to incriminate any um grocery stores or or gas stations or anything, but could you guys go buy beer because you were the Gronk brothers? Nah, hell no, man. No, <laughs> nah, we were I mean, we weren't cool until uh, yo, Rob won a couple Super Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you can't get away with that back then. Bunch of bandwagon <laughs> fans. Yeah, like my kids might like when they're older, but yeah. nah, we no, nah, I mean no we were no. known for sports in you know in, in in town and stuff like that, but no, nah, there was you know no most people most people didn't like Rob, man. Like they like mm. he, he broke a couple backboards and stuff like that and they're like, yo, he needs to pay for them and like uh, yeah. people people hated yeah. on him bad. Uh, uh you know, they they hate greatness, man. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. So, All right. So back to draft day. So so Rob gets drafted, but now you're sitting there, right? Yep. Was your kind of intention like, hey, I'm, I'm here for him. If it happens, it happens. Or did you say, hey, I'm, I think maybe day two, day three, I've got a shot. What was kind of mindset after he gets picked? It was more like maybe fifth, sixth, seventh round, something uh-huh. like that. Uh, my brother Dan went in the seventh round before, the, the year before. And, uh, you know, my agent said, you know, maybe um, mm-hmm. there, there was a chance there. And I obviously thought it would have been amazing if I did get drafted. But yeah. I, I found out later and kind of looking back on it, I'm glad I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because, you know, yeah. My brother Dan went seventh round. He went to the Lions and he was behind like four really good tight ends. Mm, yeah. And he was in a position where there was no chance he was going to make the team. Right. Yeah. Like they brought him in because he was the best left. And that was the only reason they brought him in. Yeah. It wasn't because they needed a tight end. So uh, having the ability to pick where you went was the reason that I made a team. Yeah. So, okay. So what was that process? You, you, you don't get drafted. Now phone calls start ringing. Yeah, yeah. So they they rang during it and like you know the teams, they'll hit you up in like the fourth round and be like, you get so pumped, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Just like, make sure hey, this is your number. <laughs> we absolutely love you. What you've done in college. Yeah. Uh, 
Yo, we'd love to sign you as a free agent. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, they're oh, setting early. you up. They're yeah, setting like you up already. Yeah. They wanted to be the first time, yeah. the first yeah. call, right? To mm-hmm. like get you, you know, all excited that yeah. they actually care about you, right? right. And so, you take that personally, like, yeah, I got mad, draft man. Draft me, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you love me so much, draft me. So I'm like, and then they'll string you along too, like, oh, we might take you here, and and yeah. you know, they had no intentions to. Yeah, they just right. wanted to, you know, yeah. get you on the phone and, and try to sign you as undrafted free agent early. So a bunch of those calls came in, like maybe three, four, five teams, and um. The team I signed with didn't call at all, and um, but my agent already knew. So uh, Rosenhaus did a good job. He was like, you know, within three minutes of after the draft, he called me and just said, "Hey, you're signing with the Cowboys." Mm. So he didn't say, "Do you want to sign with them?" Or right. uh, what do you think about these other teams? He was like, "Hey, you're signing with the Cowboys," and I was like, "Okay, all right, <laughs> let's do it." So were so. they one of the teams that were calling? Were the Cowboys calling you? No, during? it was like the, like the Chiefs were call- like it was a bunch of teams calling, um, but he, they might have been calling him. They didn't call me, and, right. and I didn't know about it. So. Um, he just that that was out of the blue. Like I had no clue the Cowboys were even interested, or he didn't tell me, so I didn't know that. But he had been talking to him the whole time. So growing up in Buffalo, were you a, a Bills fan all hey, through yeah, and through, man. going through? Yeah, okay. yeah, big time. So um, my dad went to all the Super Bowls. He was big time. He's kind of as like a scab player too, and had like oh. the contract on the wall, and it was worth like nothing. But um, <laughs> he took it down after Rob got drafted. <laughs> 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 I remember I used it for like show and tell yeah. one year. <laughs> but uh yeah, like yeah, yeah, I gotta ask him about that. <laughs> we gotta bring that up one day. But it was like, yo, it, it was the centerpiece of his office for a couple years until right. uh, <laughs> until we all signed and then that thing disappeared. I've never seen it since. <laughs> never but, seen it since. Yeah. So what was that like though? Cowboys, like, you know, America's team. What was it like? What was, what was uh, I was pumped, man. Like like I didn't even think it was like to me, for some reason, I thought I would get picked up by like a team that was like 0-16, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. So to go to a good team, I was like, damn, man, like yeah. this game, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. Like they actually want me here. So uh, I was pumped for sure and um, had no clue what was coming next, man. I was just, I was just excited and yeah. we threw it. We threw who was the, who was the yeah, coach? Yeah. Was that uh, Garrett? Yeah. Uh, so it was before Garrett. It was, uh, uh, it was Wade. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause that was, that was coming off of the, what year was it? It was, was 2010. So 10. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was one okay. Wade. it was halfway through the year. Wade got fired. Yeah. yeah. How much were they using a fullback? What were the Cowboys using the fullback? A lot. Thing? Yeah. I was probably playing, um, on average about 30 snaps. Uh, okay. Jeez. Yeah. I was playing. Uh, yeah, man. That'd be nice. So that yeah. first year no. you made the team. <laughs> let me, let me tell you why it wasn't. Why, let me tell you why it wasn't, man. <laughs> Sorry. I missed that title. Oh, hold on. <laughs> said must be nice. 30 <laughs> snaps. Holy hey, smokes. Man. That was the only year that they didn't play or pay out player performance. That's oh, right, because it was like, right after the lockout. Or oh. Rookie, it was actually the first. So my first two years when I you know played all my snaps, basically, I didn't get paid, paid any player performance. So I would have doubled my salary. Okay, explain what player performance is. We haven't talked about it on this mm. show, and I'm sure if you go to TikTok and figure that, have you done a video on that? I have, I have. Okay. I I, uh, yeah. I did one about how I liked to you know when I was with the Broncos, like at the end of the half and the end of the game, a lot of times I'd run out there and I'd kneel the ball twice in a row. Yeah. Mm. And I'd get paid like 600 bucks a play. Oh, I would literally, oh, wow. no joke, a field goals and the yeah. end of the yeah. end of the uh, the last play of the game, victory. I'm like, Victory's my favorite $500, come on. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I never thought about yeah. that. Like, yeah. So it's, it's true. It's small. It's, it's, it's small because it's all based on, on your actual salary. Right. And then it's a percentage. So like Romo would get like, I don't know, three bucks a play or less, something mm. like that, right? But, like, if your salary is really small and based on how many years you're in, it's a percentage of it, right? There's this bucket, and it's and it's and there's a formula that formulates. So the less you make, the bigger you get in player performance, yeah. and it's yeah. per play. Yeah, so special true. teams, I'm like – Especially since it was money, because you run down the field like I just made five hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. Are you, yeah. it was a touchback. What are you weird thinking about? Yeah. No, Who the I, hell I, was I? Man, <laughs> you making too much you, money? You probably, yeah, you you're making too much. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm not here with that, what man. You were the three dollar guy. <laughs> but no, each team has a pool, so and it's a lot. Like it's millions mm-hmm. of dollars. Yeah, that each team gets and um, like 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 Zeke made like sixty eight thousand. Yeah, when, when mm. he played every snap. You know, a guy like me, I would have doubled my salary. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I would have made a lot. And yeah. my rookie year, I made 305. So, like, I probably would have made way more. Like, I would have mm. more than doubled my salary yeah. uh, just from player performance. So, because uh, I was a rookie, plus I played so many snaps. And instead, of, you know, it was that one year no one got anything. So, God. Uh, so, so, okay, talk still, through training. Still waiting for it. Yeah. yeah. So, wait yeah. Up. I'm hoping he'll, yo, just fill me <laughs> yeah. in. I, hey, Union, Darren, go do your work. job. Players Association, <laughs> yeah, do your yeah. job. We'll go give me that money back. For yeah. Two years. For those two years, man. Come on. The NFL surprise you with some random checks sometimes, to be honest with you. Hey, I you still to this ran- day? Get, get some random ones. Really? Some randos, for sure. Hey, I mean, I still got, like, you know, like the Madden checks. Like, I think even a year after I was yeah. playing, somebody. Like, hey. 
Yep. I'm not, I'm not complaining. Yeah. Um, okay. So you, you, you're undrafted. Who was your competition at fullback in camp? And, and how did that process go to earn that job? Yeah. So um, there was a three year starter there before me. Um, I can't remember his last name, Dion. Um, and be beast, man. Absolute beast. But, um, you know, he, he had got into some trouble in the offseason. So he was kind of on like his last leg, right? Yeah. So if anything happened, um, you know, and, and how Drew was playing it too was he was playing me as, uh, you know, making practice squad. Yeah. And then, you know, if anything happened to the starter, I was next up. That was kind of mm-hmm. the game plan. So I went in. Um, they lost a couple tight ends in, in camp, and I was kind of like that H-back guy, right? Yeah. So I ended up making the team with, with two fullbacks, which never happens, right? Yeah. But they needed kind of this this guy to fill in, and um, mm-hmm. you know, I was playing well, and I was just I was out of my mind back then, man. Like I didn't care. It was kind of like, kind of like when I was in college, like I would get hammered and just like go out there, yeah, and just right. reckless, like just try to kill people, and yeah. didn't care. So um, that's how it was, and and so I made the team, and then Dion got hurt the second game, so or maybe no, the first game he got hurt, so we had something with his knee, he had to get scope. He was going to be out three weeks, and I mean, you know what happens when, yeah, when guys yeah. get hurt, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, next thing you know, they release him. And I'm like, oh shit, man, it's game time now. Mm. So, um, that was it, man. So I started the rest of the year. Man, okay. So how many years were you with the Cowboys? So I was with them just one year, just that one year, just one your rookie year. year. And then you go to Denver. Uh, right? I went to, um, I got released and then I got picked up on waivers to, to Indy. And I, Indy. Up, was okay, this that way? Wait, wait, did you get released during the season no, or after the season? After so season was next like, okay. camp, after the next camp, I got, uh, okay. I got released after camp and. They bring um, it. Was that when they brought in? Um, uh, came from Houston. No, so they didn't. They, Vic, they um, they might have. It, it might have been, but Vickers, in camp yeah. they didn't have anyone, and okay. then they might have brought them in a little bit later in the season. Okay. I'm not okay. sure. Well, but, and um, they were always trying to go tight ends anyway. Mm-hmm. That's that's what they said. They're like, we're not keeping anyone. We're using tight ends only for this spot. Yeah. And um, yeah, you know, so I ended up getting released. I got picked up on waivers. Uh, I couldn't go on practice squad anymore because back then the was, rules were gone. yeah, yeah. If so, you have so many active games, you mm, can't go. You oh, can't yeah. go backwards to oh. practice so squad. So for me, it was either you know once I got released, I had to take a roster spot of someone else, or you know I was done. So it was kind of I was like shit. I don't know what's going to happen here. So um, I actually got claimed by multiple teams, and then I got rewarded to the Colts. So um, the the Eagles tried to pick me up and one other team as well, and. Uh, ended up going to the Colts and being the first fullback in Indy and like that's right because his entire Peyton, career man right. so yeah they brought me in there because uh they didn't know what was going to happen with Peyton and they're like we need some more run support so yeah. huh. uh end up going in there um they have no offense for a fullback at all and uh like they're like putting in plays when I got there for the fullback and I'm like <laughs> what what is going on right now <laughs> and uh the plays were great too man like like instead of doing like a lead iso like uh-huh. To get the linebacker out of there, they just had me run into the flat. And I'm like, so without the physical, part, yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Wait, like, what? How, th- th- this was this was what they were doing, man. Yeah. So like, you know, the middle linebacker is, yo, he has to cover me, right? Yeah. So instead of me leading up in the hole on a run play, they'd be like, yo, just run into the flat. And then the, and then if the guy didn't cover me, he would just throw it to me. Oh, really? Yeah. So like, it, once he stopped, so it was like, like a run pass option. Yeah. For the like, quarterback? like once he stopped covering me, then we'd actually run a, a play where they throw it to me. Huh. So I was like, man, this is pretty genius, actually. <laughs> like, I don't even have to smash my head every play. And uh, and if they don't cover me, then right. they're going to throw me the ball. Like, this is right. awesome. So those are the plays. that Like, I've never seen a play like that in my whole life. So no. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, I've never seen an offense like this. But uh, so I get there, and I'm playing, and, and I'm playing every special teams, too. So, like, they're like, hey, you're going to play all four. Mm-hmm. Like, you're, you're going to do everything you can because there's not that much in here for a fullback, but we need a fullback. So – First game, I play like five snaps. You know, second game, they start picking up, and finally, um, we're just getting blown out every game. Like we're we're zero seven, and we're playing against the Saints. The score is like forty five nothing, mm. and um, I go down and, and I tackle Darren Sproles, like the best play ever on kickoff coverage. I tackle him on the fifteen yard line, and I clotheslined him. I came off my guy like, and I, I clotheslined him, and I go to like slap everyone up, and I'm like, dude, something ain't right, right? Mm. So, ended up completely tearing my pec on it, Oof. and. Um, Oof. You know, that was the one game where they're like, we're going to use the fullback all game. I got like 30 oh, snaps. Damn. And uh, the whole second half I'm playing, like I'm trying to stretch my arm over my head. You're not telling anyone? I, like, I, just, I thought he popped me like in my shoulder where it was just really bruised. bruised right. like, I, didn't, I didn't know that I tore my pack off. So right. like I didn't know. And the adrenaline plus like you're yeah. still loose. Right. So you could get through any injury 
until that game ends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Then the second yeah. the game ends, like you could have a high ankle oh, sprain. Yeah. Were you a preventative Tordal guy or were you? So I, I never took Tordal. Never took Tordal. No. no. Never In took it. Name. So oh, I yeah. never took it. And man, I'm scared. I'm scared. Of, <laughs> scared of needles, man. Just be a rather. I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> so I, okay. I would. I would go down from a shot sometimes, so mm. I stayed away from them. Oh, yes, man, I can't imagine playing without those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah I tore it off. So yeah. After week, five, all right. So, so, all right. So, in Indy, you tear your chest. Do they? Do they? I put you on so IR. Put me on IR. Uh, okay. So I, I was on IR the rest of the year there. Um, it was it was a six month recovery, so I had to have surgery. Yeah. Um, you know, had surgery on. What was your mindset going through that? Like, is it, hey, Dude, I'm going to get another shot, or is this it, or is what's No, I thought, I thought I was still good. Um, you know, I was playing. They love me in Indy, man. I thought I was going to be in Indy forever. So, mm. um, you know, the special teams coach has highlighted me on everything. Like, this guy's amazing. Like, you guys need to be like him. I'm like, fuck, yeah, I'm going like to <laughs> be like the special teams captain for the next five right. years, right? Like, that's a good place to that be, man. Yeah. For the next 10. Yeah. 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 Like, and I'm going to play a little bit on offense. Like, that's cool with me, man. That's mm. a great place to be in, especially with the new rules where, like, Yo, every ball is kicked out of the end zone anyway. Right, so right. Yeah. I'm chilling. Like, yeah, I'm going to – and it was just kind of this feel there too where it was like this blue-collar team, man. Like, everyone was undersized. Everyone was like this hard worker. Mm-hmm. They showed up, like, in pickup trucks. And, like, I'm like, man, like, this kind of fits me a little bit better than Dallas mm-hmm. where it was like this car show every day. Right. So I um, thought I'd be there forever and then um, recover from it. You know, I'm, I'm starting on everything still. I'm still good. And then, uh, you know, this guy named Bruce Arians comes in. And, uh, you know, he has this meeting with me. He's like, hey, can you kind of be like that H-back guy? And I'm like, hell yeah, man. Like, I would love to be that H-back guy. That's what I did in college. Like, I was a lot better than just making holes all day, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I know, um, you know, I'm not in the offense at all. So I'm like, damn. You know, what happened? Pulled me that week, like that Monday, just took me off everything. And I'm like, I don't know what I did. But I got a tap on my shoulder later that day, and they're like, you're going to Denver, man. They traded Back your you. stuff up. So no they traded way. me. Oh, no man. warning, no nothing. So that exact day that they told me, had no clue, and I was on a flight that night going wow. to Denver. So, Tyler, yeah, uh, Tyler, you had a few man, of those moments you told us about. Those, yeah. Uh, yeah, but they, man, I, I think literally Peyton watched like one game with us. He came in, and like this one game, I think it was against the Browns, it was like the best game I ever had. And uh, I light up this linebacker, and he's like, now that's how you play football. And I swear that made an impression on him <laughs> enough to get me traded to Denver. Because the next thing I know, I'm now still the only fullback that ever played with Peyton in, like, you know, his whole career. So Wait a minute. Yeah. So you're saying Peyton <laughs> saw the play? Or who saw the play? Yeah, Peyton watched one play, and I, he was like, that's how you play. That's how you hit a linebacker. He said some comment like that. Got me pumped up, right? I still remember. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the next thing I know, I'm going to Denver. Wow. Once he, you know, he left, like, right. a month before that and right. uh, ended up in Denver, so. Uh, it was probably the worst place to be, though, because, again, like I went into Peyton's offense again, and there was no spot for a fullback, fullback at all. Yeah. So it was another thing where there was a, it was a preventative thing. Like, let's see where Peyton's at, and, and if he can't you know, perform, then we need a fullback. Because that was his first year in Denver? Yeah, first right. year. So, so who, was, uh, who was the head coach then? So it was John Fox. Fox, that's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you're in. How long were you in Denver? So I was in Denver for a year. Uh, it, it was the end of my three year contract as well. So, okay. oh, because um, you got claimed off waiver. Okay, yeah, so, so I never lost my. So contract. this is another video he did because I was similar because yeah. I was in Chicago, got traded to Houston, claimed off of waivers. So my agent that I fired literally got paid the whole time, man. Month, <laughs> a month, a month, wow, a month into my NF, my first year of my contract, I fired. And he got paid all three years. Yeah. Got yeah. it all, man. Yeah. And did a one-time did you, deal. Did you got resign paid. with someone else, too? I did. No? And he, did? And he was he a stud. Nothing, new agent just he was a stud, screwed. and he went through it. and, and still, nothing. Dude, nothing. Now, wow. I mean, I signed two more mm. contracts after that, but at the same time, like, yeah. 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 yeah he worked for brutal. free for two years. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. rough. Yeah. That's rough, man. So, yeah. So, I, I mean, I got to – I got there, and, um, like, I didn't play at all on offense. Like, I had one catch from Peyton, and – uh like I post that picture everywhere, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but besides that, like you know, there was no spot for yeah. for me in his offense. Like he's walking up to the line every time and calling a play, and you know right. there, it's five mm-hmm. wide. So you know, there, there's Peyton's offense doesn't use a fullback, so it's kind of mm-hmm. the worst spot to end up in. Uh, so I played there, but just played special teams. You know, I got a lot of victories in too. So I mm-hmm. I got those six hundred dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, a lot of you know we won thirteen games, so I, I made like five G's off kneel down. So mm. yeah, that was pretty sweet. Um, my player performance ended up being like sixty eight thousand that year, just oh, from like just special teams. Special yeah. teams, yeah. Yep. So like you could see how much you would make if you actually yeah. played mm-hmm. thirty snaps a game as well. If you're a lower paid guy, so uh, did that contract ended. They didn't resign me, so um, you know just 
just uh, became a free agent at that point, and I signed with the Chargers. So I went into camp with the Chargers. Um, after the first preseason game, one of the, you know, the D tackles thought it was cool to play after the whistle and throw Ronnie Brown, and he fell on the back of my ankle, and I got a high ankle sprain. So uh, I thought I probably would have made the team that year. Uh, I was going against, at that time, the fullback they had was the highest paid fullback in the league. So they yeah. brought me in to – Told you know, yeah. If I yep. could perform, they were going to save a lot right. of money mm-hmm. yeah. with me. So, you know, you kind of know if you're going to be on the team or not based on special teams. So playing every special teams, playing with the ones, uh, he's playing with the ones as well. So it was, it was a good competition, and that happened, and you're damaged goods at that point. So yeah. injury settlement, um, for me, I had three three credited, so I, I was a vet, had mm-hmm. the benefits, and um, they said, well, we'll give you an injury settlement for three games, which gave me a fourth credited. So oh, I, oh damn, I was like, huge. Okay. I, man, vested, I, yeah, I was, vested they tried to do two, right? They right. tried to do, they tried to get me with two. They're like, <laughs> hey, this injury is like – Whatever long, how much, however long was left in camp plus two two game checks, and I was Ooh, like, it feels pretty bad. I think it's, I was like, it's nah, eight weeks moved. at least. <laughs> so yeah, you know, Drew went back and was like, you give him three and we'll sign it. So um, you know, I signed it for three, got the extra one, and um, that injury ended up being it ended up being way longer than they said too. Mm-hmm. Like I was I was rehabbing for months after that, and mm-hmm. it was it was bad, like bad high ankle sprain, and uh, of course they had me like. Trying to run the next day on yeah, it too. Oh, of course, oh, trying to put you on film. So, yeah, they want you yeah, on yeah. film, man. Yeah, yeah, they, they tried it, man. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't even move, and uh, it just it just made it even worse. But yeah, it took me like three months to come back from it. So yeah. I did that. Uh, tried getting resigned. I uh, went to like a camp in Miami, and uh, at that point, I ran a forty. My third step out, I tore my hammy, uh, ruptured oh, it to the point where it rolled up, and they're like, "Hey, uh, surgery, or you probably want to give up f- football." So. Uh, for me, it was a, a blessing in disguise because it was kind of that that ending. You, know, mm-hmm. you, you can you can put it behind you and move on. Where a lot of guys struggle with that for years and years right, and yeah. years, and it's always like, yo, I think I can make one more team. Right, yeah. I got one yeah. more year in me. For me, it was like, I am not having surgery again. Um, this is done. So, so you are, you're okay with? It. I mean, you made the decision there. I mean, I, I can I can imagine that happening, and still having that dream, knowing that you could play. Yeah. So for me, it was it was done. For sure. Um, so I tried to come back and train and stuff like that, and like I kept, I kept hurting myself so, too, doing right. that. So, uh, but it was really more about what was started. Uh, my transition already happened. It mm-hmm. actually happened after uh, Denver, where my wife started a business and it was taken off. So mm-hmm. uh, all my attention and all my focus was already there, anyways. Even when I went to this tryout, and um, yeah, I was making more money doing that than playing football too, wow. man. So uh, it was, uh, it was pretty nice.